Want to supercharge your Express.js app with a modern, flexible database solution? In this video, we'll dive into integrating Prisma ORM to streamline data handling and simplify your Express.js database connection setup. Hi, my name is Alex. I'm a senior software engineer with years of experience in API development. My goal is to help you become a more skilled and proficient developer. Let's get started. I am in a Node.js Express app where we have set up routes for tasks and projects, but they currently return empty responses. Let's update these routes to return actual data. As always, the link to the code will be in the description below. We'll start by installing Prisma and adding it as a dev dependency. Then we'll initialize Prisma with npx prisma init, choosing MySQL as the data source provider since we'll connect to a MySQL database. The initialization provides us with a list of next steps to continue the setup. To get started, we'll set the database URL in the .env file. We'll skip the Prisma DB pool step since we don't have a pre-existing schema. Next, we'll run Prisma Generate to create the Prisma client, enabling us to query the database. If you would like to dive deeper into Prisma, you can check out their getting started documentation. Let's open that .env file. Prisma generated a sample database URL, which we'll replace with our actual database connection URL. I already have DB server running in Docker and created a database named Task Manager. If you would like to learn how to run MySQL database in Docker, please check out the video on how to set up SQLize in Node.js project. Next, let's go to the Prisma folder. Prisma generated a schema.prisma file for us with a basic configuration. This Prisma configuration defines a client and a data source. The generator client block specifies that Prisma should generate the JavaScript Prisma client, Prisma client JS, for interacting with a database. The data source DB block sets up the database connection. Here, provider equals MySQL, designates MySQL as the database provider, and URL equals env database URL, retrieves the database connection string from an environment variable that we set up earlier. You can also notice that schema.prisma file doesn't look very good, and in order to make it look better, we need to install Prisma extension for VS Code. So let's go ahead and look for Prisma extension and install it. After Prisma extension is installed, we can go back to Prisma schema file and we can see that the file is looking much better now. In the schema file, we will be defining our models. Our application needs to have two models, task and project. Let's start with the task model. This Prisma schema defines a task model with the fields corresponding to task properties. ID, primary key for each task, set as a generated string uh, CUID. CUID is a sequential unique identifier, therefore it can be indexed faster than the UUID. You can also use auto-incrementing integer for the primary key. User ID, a required string field stored as a 36 character varchar in the database. We're not going to store users in the database, at least for now. User information usually comes from identity providers such as Auth0 or AWS Cognito. User IDs, there normally are UUIDs and user ID data type accounts for that. Project ID, optional string referencing an associated project. Name is a task name as a string. Uh, description is optional text field. Its native MySQL data type is also text. Due date and completed on optional date fields created at defaults to the current date and time, updated at auto updates to the latest modification time. Task model has a foreign key relation to project model that we will create in a minute. We're adding an index to the user ID field to make retrieving tasks specific to a user faster and more efficient. Finally, we'll name the table tasks lowercase plural. This is the convention I like to use. Now let's go ahead and define project model. The code for the project model will be the following. ID is a unique identifier automatically generated using CUID. User ID a variable character string linking the project to a specific user. 
name and description are project details with a description being optional, created it and updated it, track time stamps with updated it, automatically updating on record changes. Tasks is a relation field connecting multiple tasks to the project. This field is not stored in a database, but will be present on Prisma model. Additionally, user ID has an index for faster lookups and the table name is mapped to projects in lowercase plural form. Since the schema was updated, we need to run npx prisma generate to refresh prisma with the latest schema. This command installs the prisma client package in the project and generates the client in node modules. We can then start importing the Prisma client and querying the data. Let's create the Prisma client in the SRC folder to get started. The code for Prisma client will be very simple. The code imports Prisma client class from a Prisma client package. A new instance of Prisma client is created and assigned to Prisma variable, establishing a connection to the database. Finally, it exports this instance as the default export, allowing other parts of the application to use Prisma for database operations. Now let's go to package.json file and define a couple of Prisma scripts. But before we do that, if you are learning something new from this video, please like and subscribe to our channel to help YouTube recommend it to more viewers. We're going to add Prisma Generate script that we ran earlier. We will also add a migration script. It will run Prisma Migrate Dev with a flag create only. You can actually run Prisma Migrate Dev without this flag to create migration and apply it to the database in one go, but I like to create migration first, review it, and only then apply it with a migrate script Prisma Migrate Deploy. Let's create our first migration with npm run migration create script. We will name the migration create tasks and projects tables. Prisma created the migration for us, and this migration is in Prisma Migrations folder. This is an SQL file, let's take a look at it. This file contains the MySQL code for creating the tasks and projects tables, including all the fields defined in our Prisma schema. The ID fields act as primary keys, and there is an index on user ID for both tables. Additionally, there is a foreign key constraint for project ID in the tasks table, which references ID in projects with on delete set to null and on update to cascade. It's good to review these migrations for adjustments, as Prisma might not allow column reordering. Once confirmed, we apply the migration with npm run migrate, and it looks like migration was applied successfully. Next, let's go ahead and update the code and the controllers. Let's go to the project controller. We're going to import Prisma from Prisma client. In the list projects function, we will get the projects using Prisma's find many method. In get project function, we will retrieve projects from the database using Prisma's find unique method based on the project ID received from the request parameter. If the project does not exist, it throws entity not found error with a 404 status code, an error message project not found, and a custom error code. Finally, in list project tasks function, we put the code that fetches all tasks associated with a specific project from the database using Prisma's find many method. The where clause filters tasks based on the project ID field, which matches the ID provided in RecParams.id. This allows for retrieving only tasks related to the specific project. Now let's go ahead and update the tasks code in the task controller. We will import Prisma from Prisma client the same way we did in the project controller. Uh, in list tasks function, we will retrieve the tasks using Prisma's find many function. In get task a function, we will put the code that retrieves a specific task from the database using Prisma's find unique method, filtering by the task's ID from the URL parameter. If no task is found with that ID, it throws an entity not found error with an error message, task not found, a 404 status code, and a custom error code. Now let's run npm run dev to make sure our code is still working. We'll open API test.http file and make sure the routes return responses and don't break. 
It looks like the routes work fine, however, they don't return any data. Let's add some data to the tables we created in the database. I am in Table Plus where I have Task Manager database open. There are three tables, Tasks, Projects and Prisma Migrations. Prisma Migrations table is created by Prisma automatically to keep track of the migrations. So now let's go ahead and create a task. I'll add a new row with an ID using a random CU ID. You can generate one with an online CU ID generator and a user ID, which can be a UUID. For now, I'll leave the project ID as null. The task name will be task1 and the description, due date and completion date can remain null. I'll set the updated app to 2024 1031 010203. Normally Prisma will auto-populate the updated date, however, since I'm entering the data manually, I have to do it. Then I'll create a project with a CUID assigned as a user ID. Uh, set project1 as the name, leave description empty and add the updated add date. The tables are now populated and ready for queries. Let's switch back to VS Code and make calls to the endpoints again. Call to get tasks is now returning an array with one task. Get tasks by ID will return a not found error since the ID is one. However, if we put the correct ID, we will get a task that we created in the database. In the same way, we can test projects and points. Uh, get project endpoint is going to return us a list with one project. Get project by ID will get us an error not found unless we put the correct project ID. Finally, get project tasks will return an empty array even if we use the correct project ID because there are no tasks assigned to the project. That wraps up our guide on using Prisma ORM with ExpressJS. You've got the tools to set up a powerful ExpressJS database connection that's easy to manage and maintain. When developing an API, you need a test data. Entering test tasks and projects manually, as we just did, can be a long and tedious process. In the next video, we'll look at how to automate this process by using seeders.